I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning and remind you guys that this is a wonderful Thursday night, and this is our midweek uplift. I'm Reverend Lynn Chaplinoe from the Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley in Camarillo, California. Fondest wish that everyone everywhere is watching this for their 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 uplift for midweek. And um, Camarillo, California, it's beautiful pristine days these days. So it's a great Thursday night and I'm so happy to be here with all of you. What a great opportunity to just key in on principles and spiritual principles and ideas that you want to take in to the rest of your week and to the rest of your life and it, drop them into your spiritual practice. And you can also contribute comments. I'm already seeing comments here from Marcia Beebe who makes all of these wonderful things happen for our center. She's behind the scenes making things work. And so you can comment and let me know if you have some something that you want to address and I'll see if we have time we can answer some questions. We've been given a great gift in the last eight months or so. Let's look at it like that. And there's some really um, dicey things that are going on in our country, on our planet, but we've given been given a great gift to go within, to discover who we are, to understand and be with our ways of thinking and our beliefs and, and the way we, we put our thoughts together and our activities and our daily activities, to work on our spiritual practice and to discover things about ourselves that we just didn't know. I'm telling you, <laughs> I find that I'm a stronger, richer person for having gone through the last eight months and I'm ready for whatever there is. I'm ready for it. I'm in for it. Uh, also, I've never cooked so much in my life. <laughs> I've cooked almost every meal but five meals in eight months and uh, I'm getting to like my own cooking. And I'm imagining that if all of us just sat around chatting for a while, we would find out that Many of us have been experiencing the same things, maybe the same thoughts, the same ideas, something around. They're asking the same questions. We would find out that we're actually expressing our oneness. Everyone says we're in this together. And, uh, eh, you know, okay, it sounds like a battle cry or something. But we are one. And we are collectively experiencing something through our uniqueness. I don't feel and think things the way you do, but I do do feel the same things. We have our emotions are archetypical. How we respond to our emotions is our uniqueness. I had an actor acting teacher who just drummed that into me all the time, and I believe that. And the experience that we're having right now and will be are continuing to have are both individual and collective so the title of this talk tonight is focus find our centered unified spirit let's break that down focus means laser attention laser like attention uh, i'll read this here meet at a single point light Radio waves or other energy become concentrated into a sharp beam of light or energy, into a sharp beam. So focus, focus on what we want reveal in our world today. Okay, find, that's to seek, our focus, find our, our individually and collectively regarding this quote and centered centered you know spiritually we always say we're centered but there's it, actually center is is a focal point is finding the the focal point uh, uh, a well balanced and confident and serene person is centered it is the center of our being it's also and i call it this to myself center of operations that's the place whatever i'm giving comes from that center of operations. That's my spiritual center. Unified, of course, is unity. Make or become in unity, whole. And then spirit. So the our focus is focus 
focus on our centered unified spirit so spirit and i'll tell you a story what spirit means to me is in 1997 i first came into the teaching of at that time it's called religious science science of mind and my son and i have two amazing sons and and uh, my son daniel i think was visiting from connecticut and he said mom what is spirit and I said, darned if I know. And we talked all week about what we thought spirit was. And then miraculously, the first day, the first Sunday, which was that week, I went to see who was the, going to be my spiritual mentor, Dr. Tom Johnson, in his Sunday service. And he stood there, raised his hands and said, what is spirit? I went, well, okay, I guess I'm going to get my answer. His answer was this. Spirit is self-contemplation at the level of God, which is not unlike uh, Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind. His definition is similar to that. Self-contemplation at the level of God. Spirit is our highest self, our identifying with our highest expression, the non-physical part of a person, which is the seat of emotions and character, the soul. So there you go. It's an animating principle, a vital spark, soul. It's life itself, spirit. And our country has a spirit. Uh, our country at its best has a great spirit, magnanimous spirit, a democratic spirit. Um, if I can be allowed to say that. Anyway, it is an animating principle, spirit. And if we're to step up, with our vision for the world that we want that works for everyone and then and create new systems and and uh, and create love and life in action for the world around us then we're going to have to be a team and that is our centered unified you, you getting there yeah our center unified spirit we're going to have to be a team but we need a call to action I have a call to action and this miraculously of course miraculously of course came on as a memory on Facebook today for me and this is a quote by our beloved Dr. Sue Rubin Dr. Sue S U E Rubin R U B I N and you guys you have to really look into who this miraculous person is Dr. Sue Rubin says it's a precarious walk we take in life without a reach into the infinite from what was once upon a time our finite perch of complacency. The day is short and the night too dark and lonely to travel, if only seen from the realm of materiality. To secretly yearn to contribute to a world that takes a turn for the greater means that now is the time to take a deeper dive into the divine where our sacred assignments await. It is only when we come to the edge of all we presently know that we are shown what we have yet to discover and share. So we've got an assignment, guys. We're a team, and our assignment to creating a world that works for everybody is to do some of these things we're going to talk about tonight. I love that. Dr. Sue Rubin, don't forget that. So if our plan is to focus on our centered, unified spirit and be a team, to keep in the crosshairs at the center of our being and at the center of our collective awareness, the truth of our oneness and our purpose and to keep our vibrations and, and our frequency at a higher level, then this is what we're talking about tonight. At an ever evolving rate and an ever evolving uh, vibration and frequency of our beingness. So I want to tell you what, it's on page 10 here on this. <laughs> uh, I want to tell you what frequency is. I have a definition for frequency. Frequency is measured in Hertz units, is the rate at which vibrations and oscillations occur. Frequency is the rate at, wh where, at which vibrations occur. So an atom that is vibrating at a faster rate would be considered a higher frequency. 
that than one that's vibrating at a much slower rate. We are, guys, pure energy, sizzling beings. That's us. We're ready kilowatt. Uh, Mary Mann and Morrissey describes our potential as that vibration up there, that high frequency. And that high frequency, we identify with that wherever we are right now. And we want to jump to that high frequency. There might be some work to do. So let's just evolve to that high frequency. It's there. It's there. So as a unique individualized expression of the one that I am, I know that I'm very focused right now on keeping the high watch for our country and our planet and on raising the vibration vibrations and the um, frequency of our collective and individual beingness and visioning a new system for our governance and in our cultures. I don't know if you agree with me, but you find out what it is because we are a team. Remember, we are in this together. That's a huge list. That's a big list. And it's time that we did it. It's time that we rolled up our sleeves and got really serious, got down and dirty, dug in the trenches and create a world that works for everyone. It's not just everything's in divine order, guys. It's everything is in divine order. And I am prepared to awaken to that in every thought and every deed. And I'm doing it right now and I'm going into action with it. We need to put our money where our mouth is. But we need a plan, right? If we're a team, we need a plan. So uh, still, you can mention things in the comment, uh, comment section if you want to. But here's a plan, a couple of things going toward our plan, which of course is to raise the vibration frequency and to create a world that works for everyone and uh, vision new governance and new cultures. So let's talk about that. Number one, breathe. Breathing is our greatest tool. It's the greatest gift that we've been given. It's the gift of life. And it's how we can master the appearances of all this stuff around us. Number two, stay unattached. Don't allow what's going on around you and all that chaos, everything outside of you, don't that monkey mind, don't let that monkey mind and appearances in the world around you define who you are. Stay focused on the good. And then number three, choose who you want to be. Do you want to be um, uh, uh, an, a spiritual activist? Do you want to be a calm centered being for everyone to gather to? Do you want to be a teacher? Do, who do you want to be? And how you do that is do the first two steps, breathe, stay unattached, and then step into your own divine flow. It sounds simple, maybe not that simple, but start with breathing. Listen to your breathing. As soon as you say, as soon as you breathe, you take a breath and listen to that breath, feel that breath. I am. This is now. I am here. This is now. And there you are at that center. Remember that a centered, unified place in your being. I am. I'm pretty much that simple. Can you breathe right now? Take a breath. I am. There you go. And when I chose this, this, um, this topic of focus, and so I like to crowdsource on Facebook and ask a question, to see what people are thinking. So I went on Facebook this week and the question was, what's the difference between oneness and unity? And knowing that this talk was going to be about uh, our centered unified spirit. So I wanted to hear what people said. So I had a, a, a friend, Heather, who's just a wonderful event planner and deeply spiritual person. And she equated that question with her marriage. She said each, each one of them, she and her husband are each unique individuals. And when they're their highest and best, or they bring out the highest and best in each other, then they're unified. And they, that unity is their marriage, which I thought was a lovely way of saying it. 
And a Reverend Dr. J Jim Lockhart, some of you might recognize that wonderful name from uh, his, um, um, I'll think of it in a, in a later, in, I'll think of his wonderful blog, Evolutionary, um, I'll think of it, anyway, his wonderful blog, uh, Jim Lockhart, L-O-C-K-A-R-D. He says oneness is the ultimate reality of which multiplicity arises. Unity is when aspects of multiplicity come into alignment. That sounds a lot like centered unified spirit to me. Roy Anthony Shabla, and this man is very interesting, He's a Facebook friend, I'm so blessed. He says, unity is separate beings working in accord, working well with others. Oneness is understanding that there is no other. Listen to that again. Working well with others is unity. Oneness is understanding that there is no other. <laughs> He's um, written a, a book called Open Table. You can go online and check it out. Roy Anthony Shabla, S-H-A-B-L-A, and he's written this book, Open, Open Table, which is about this subject. And then Daniel Berkman, who's someone I know very well, happens to be my son, plays beautiful music for some of our um, Sunday services. He says, oneness is one's unique potential to see that all things in the cosmos are of the same isness. Unity is the idea despite the illusion of separateness, that we can come together usually for a shared purpose. I like that too. Isness, of course, means the quality of being, existence as something. And otherness, the developed world has been celebrating African music while altogether denying its otherness. And that's a sentence using that term so jot down your comments. Remember that. Jot down your comments and let me know what you think about what we're talking about. Uh, one aspect of establishing uh, the things that you want to focus on is not being distracted. To eliminate thoughts and beliefs and behaviors and habits that you no longer need, that no longer serves you. So uh, let's have some questions for you to ask, for, for me to ask you to ask yourself. And you're welcome to close your eyes for this. It's just a short little Q&A, but I want you to really think about this and have a uh, paper and pencil ready to jot down anything that you say that you want to remember. And well, it's kind of later in the evening, it's after dinner, so if you don't want to close your eyes, you might fall asleep. But you might need to, who knows? So these questions will help you to release things that are uh, no longer of use or unwanted, and also help raise your vibration. And so, close your eyes, if you so wish. Don't fall asleep. I'm going to read these off. And this is in the first person you're asking these questions of yourself. What is one thing in my life that no longer serves me? What is one thing in my life that no longer serves me? Is it a belief? Something that you say, a habit, an activity? What no longer serves me in my life? And number two, what in my life am I ready to release? What in my life am I ready to release? And am I willing to release it? What in my life am I ready to release and am I willing to release it? And number three, and I really close your eyes, take a deep breath and feel that breath, that life, and let it show you a picture of your body and ask the question, what does my body need right now? 
What does my body need right now? And finally, who am I stepping into being? What is the new version of me that will begin to emerge when I release this one thing? What is the new version of me? And here's a reminder that new version of you is already within you. It's seeking to emerge. It's emerging slowly or quickly through your activities, through your spiritual practice, through your mindfulness practice. That new version of you is already being revealed in its own way. So you got your assignment. You got your call to action from Dr. Sue Rubin. So you've gotten your assignment is to join the team and focus on your centered, your centered, what is, I even forgot, centered, um, well, what is the darn thing? Well, you know what it is, it's the title of the talk, to focus on that, your centered unified spirit. Focus on your centered unified spirit and you're on this wonderful team and you want to put your highest and your most energetic attention, this laser beam on what you want in the world. So then you decide what you want in the world, because obviously in the collective, we're all agreeing on a lot of this stuff. So what we want individually and collectively is newness. Do you want inspiration, purpose, connectedness in all of your undertakings, connectedness, mindfulness on a global scale, love, peace, then place your loving laser focus on all of these things that you want revealed in your world and work on this collective team, this collective consciousness and step into action. I wanna remind you all to join us Sunday for our services. It's at noon Pacific time noon Pacific time. I want to see you there. I'll be there. Reverend Pamela Gagan, who's our beloved spiritual leader, will be there. Lisa Coffey is having discussion with her this Sunday. So that's uh, Facebook Live, Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley. And you just go on to that Facebook page and click on, you'll see the service and just click that on at noon Pacific time. So remember what your assignment is. Focus on your centered, on our centered, unified spirit for a world that works for everyone. I love you. Let's begin. <laughs>